Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from building this device. Hi, I'm Ollie from Banana Science and today we will be making this awesome potato cannon. Some of them are uh, parts and tools because some of them you'll be getting from home or you can buy them uh, with all the other parts at Home Depot or Lowe's. Literally every single part here including the tools can be purchased at Home Depot or Lowe's. So you're going to need a drill, a set of drill bits. You're going to need them to be 1 16th to 1 4th or you can just get, you know, just have to be up to 1 4th. Pliers and barbecue igniter for creating a spark. A 4 inch PVC access cap. I'm going to need one of these guys where it's four inch and then two inch outwards. I'm not sure what they call this thing though, but uh, yeah. And then you're gonna need a four inch to two inch reducer. You're gonna need some a primer and PVC glue, or it doesn't really matter, we're using ABS, but it'll still work. You're gonna need some five minute epoxy for plastic. You're gonna need 35 inches of one and a half tubing, and then you're gonna need up to 15 inches of four inch tubing. This can be adjusted depending on how big you want the stock to be. You're also going to need a very short length of two inch tubing for the this is gonna, That's going to be your handle. And then two inch cap for the handle. And then a two inch to one and a half inch reducer. So that's all you'll need and this totals up to somewhere around $100. Ching! All the drills and bits and stuff. Okay, for the second step, you need to make a mark on where you're going to put your trigger. Make sure it's comfortable and you can test it kind of like this because that's how you're going to be holding it. What you're going to do is use your largest drill bit, or if it's too, if you have a huge drill bit, maybe not. But we're using a one-fourth drill bit, and I think we'll still have to wiggle it around because we just got to fit this whole thing in there. So remember, you have to wear safety glasses during this. Find that spot. I've already made my mark. There you go. Okay, so for this next step, you're going to be gluing in the trigger. So it goes in here just like this, and then you're going to be holding it like that. So for this step, you're going to need your trigger, your little sparker that probably came with your trigger some wire cutters or pliers some epoxy and some cotton swabs plus anything really to mix the epoxy and a cap to put on your epoxy later so first you're just going to want to cut these things off Whoa. and then you're going to want to take a little bit of this stuff and squirt it into your mixing bowl and it's probably going to smell like farts but there we go put a cap on this okay well now that i got that all done um I can have my epoxy in this little tray here. I'm just going to mix it up. You want to mix it pretty thoroughly here. So maybe for like 30 seconds. Okay, so now that you have epoxy mixed, you just take a cotton swab of it. Take your little piece here. You're going to want to just rub it all over. You're going to want to take your thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna want to take your thing and make sure there's that little slip wire in there. Press it in like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just let. Uh, and then you probably want to take that here. There you go. Now tape that and let it sit for like a few hours because it takes five minutes to dry, but it really just takes a lot longer to completely solidify. So next you have your little box sparker thing here. You're gonna wanna take this wire and it sticks on to one of the ports sparker here. And then you have another wire here and that sticks onto the other port. So you kinda see that there. Okay. okay, so for this next step, you're going to want to first just get a little bit of tape here. And you sense you have your sparker here. You want to make sure this part's facing upward so a little gas can get in there, or hairspray. You're going to put a piece of tape here. So, our epoxy just dried out, so we made a new batch here. You can kind of see that there. 
so we gotta go this quickly before it dries. All right, so now you're gonna quickly before your epoxy, our second batch of epoxy dries, take your epoxy here and wipe it all over this back part. Now you're going to want to stick it in this chain, in the back part of your four inch tube here, around like, so you have enough, a little bit of wire left. So you wanna stick it there. And then you're going to want to put that, push that tape down to hold it in place. So as you can see, those are the wires running from our clicker to our black box over here, which is glued in with epoxy. Once you're done, you can take that tape off and it'll be glued in there. Okay, so as you saw, our epoxy, when you glued on the, the sparker or the trigger, sometimes the seal around it with the epoxy isn't so great. So if you happen to have a hot glue gun laying around, you might as well just put a little ring of hot glue around it. We'll show you a picture of that right after this. And there you go. So if you don't have a 100% great seal, this will probably fix it. We're gonna be actually gluing our combustion chamber to our main frame here. So you're gonna to wanna to get your glue pack which has primer and regular PVC cement. At first you wanna take out the primer. If your PVC pipe's dusty, you might just wanna dust it off. The primer's super watery and it's purple and it probably stains. So don't, you know, be careful where it goes. So it probably also smells. Okay, so we finally got this can of primer popped open. It's really watery and purple, so like, be careful. So we're gonna take this thing, hopefully not spoiling it on our clothes, and just wipe it around the inside of our piping here. So, and after this, we will yeah, stick on the PVC cement. Okay, so now we got our PVC cement here. Okay, okay. now you're gonna wanna take this. our pipe our pipe, make sure the wires get all, don't get stuck in there, press them down like that. And then you're gonna wanna take it like this and put as much weight on it as you can. Now we let it dry. This stuff has to dry overnight, is that right? Uh, no, this is actually the quicker drying stuff. So you can just leave this. I recommend leaving this overnight because I'm not 100% sure how strong it'll be in a few hours, but it says it dries in like four hours or something, so. But still, just leave this overnight. Just be safe, you know? So, yeah. That's the end of this step. Thank you. Okay, so for this step, you're going to you're going to be installing your access hatch on the back, kind of like that. So, uh, like before, you're just gonna need your primer here. Nasty purple primer. Now, take your cap and it. There you go. All done. And you want to put your cap back on. And that is the end of this step. Okay, so for the almost last step, you're going to be taking your two um, pieces here, the four inch uh, reducer, four to two inch reducer, and then the two to one and a half inch reducer. This is gonna go in here, and this is gonna go in here, like that. And it, like that and then that part of this step is done and then just like we did to this we're gonna want to do the same thing to this okay take this and press it on and there you go. And just like that. And now we basically have our main frame assembled. Okay, so for this next step, we're gonna be installing the barrel. I suggest like kind of like filing out the, um, or like sanding down the tip, makes it a little bit more accurate. If you have like a lathe or something, it makes it a lot easier. But um, we don't, so we just use the Dremel. Take the barrel where, it, part of the barrel where it's not sanded and stick this. 
something like that. And also sanding helps you cut the potato if you're slamming it down on this. Or you can use a potato cutting tool, which I'll show you how to build later. But there you go, and now the barrel's installed. Okay, we are finally on the very last step, and then we have clean up, which technically counts as a step. But you're gonna take your little piece of PVC here, and it's gonna be the handle part. It's gonna kinda go like that. Make sure to pound that in nice and tight here. Because your hand's gonna be here and you do not want to get your hand blown off. And there you go. And there's your handle. You are officially done with your potato can. Now all you gotta do is wait 24 hours and clean up. Woohoo! Uh, try to stay safe. Please stay safe. Yeah, please stay safe. This is like really dangerous stuff. Like, you yeah. Um, don't shoot it at any houses or anything because it will keep going through the house and through the other side. Of the yeah, house, and maybe into the next house. So yeah, so just be very careful. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, we hope you, we hope to see you next time. Yeah, maybe with some mods for the potato cannon. We'll see.